some of my favorite moments in this movie are the moments when you guys are coming up with these classic songs. Uh, the We Will Rock You moment, like doing like that, and also the Galileo. <laughs> that those, those, how many times do you have to do that? And also, what did, what did it feel like to actually perform scenes where those songs were not yet known mm -hmm. and you're coming up with them on the spot? And what did it feel like to actually do that on set? One of the things that Brian said, he was really adamant that we kind of capture that really faithfully. He talked to us a lot about when he wrote We Will Rock You. And one of the things he said was like, when he was coming up with it, he had no idea that it was gonna be a hit. He was mm -hmm. like dubious, he, was, he had these doubts. <laughs> and so I think it was trying to play that as well, not just, not playing it knowing with the benefit of hindsight that it's become this huge hit, huh. but actually having that element of doubt and going, just go with me here, guys, please just go with it. And you know, in the scene, these guys saying, oh yeah, genius, great one. <laughs> um, uh, really kind of helps with that because it just adds into that doubt, I think. And are they picking up that exact sound on set or do they do you have to do that in ADR, the actual, or do they, are they, are they, are they, are they good get- good question. I think we, yeah. we, we did we do it on set, but yeah. the group kept speeding up. Yes, <laughs> as, as like, everyone always does. It was, when, you hear it, when you hear it at a sports event, everybody's going a little too quick. Bam was that. about to strangle every member. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone would go too fast, someone would go too slow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, did you guys end up nailing it all at once though? The way, like how many times did it take you guys to get to that point? We didn't have many takes that day, I remember, right? Are you sure? My like wrists were like broken yeah. by the whole <laughs> day. I was like, oh, if I clap one more time. Yeah. yeah. Well, my well, then they did the playback, then finally everyone was in time and then it was easier. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they did a good playback. One of my favorite so. moments in the movie, though, is the moment with you and Lucy, and you say, I can give you almost everything. Like, it, mm. it made, I, I started crying. It was such a beautiful moment. But your character, and Freddie in general, is struggling with trying to figure out who he is, who he wants to be. And I think you play that so brilliantly. Can you talk about playing that, like struggling with the idea of coming out to, the, uh, to, to Mary, and also just that whole sequence in general, what that meant for you to perform that? Yeah. Thank you. And she is absolutely phenomenal. That's Lucy Boynton as Mary Austin. It's just the, the cast on this is, uh, I, for me watching sometimes, I, I just I would forget my lines because of how good these human beings are. Mm. More on that later. <laughs> uh, you know, when I looked at Freddie, I saw uh, you know someone who's considered a rock god and icon and you know superhuman. There's, there's I was like, how am I going to bring this guy to earth and I started to think he's, he is a human. You have to look at that other side of him, almost, you know, the Clark Kent to the Superman. And uh, I saw a guy who was uh, you know, struggling for, to discover himself, his identity, foreign, an immigrant, coming from really humble beginnings, and, uh, and also, you know, someone struggling with his sexual identity yeah. at a f time when being anything other than heterosexual was very much stigmatized, extremely stigmatized. And then you see, you know, there's this fire burning inside of him. It's a tempest, and it's just it's ready to explode like a fireball mm. on stage. And uh, that moment is it was was very special because you feel it, you feel it happening uh, with him, the turmoil. But you know, there's something that has to be said. Mm. And then there's a freedom in that, and there's a freedom you see in him uh, that that he gets to share with everyone listening to the music and an, and an audience he can hold in the palm of his hand and have this experience like no other. And I think that's something the film does really well. And last thing, we're going to Wembley on Tuesday. I mm. cannot wait, I'm, I, I'm so excited about it. You guys nailed every aspect of Live Aid. The way you held that bass, the way you <laughs> moved, the way you t his feet moved, the way you held that guitar, the way you drum, every aspect of it. Can you just real briefly explain to me, each of you, what it was like to film that moment? I know there's CG, I know you have to add in effects. We talked about the shot coming down and the one shot yeah, to the did. piano. But what did it feel like to recreate that? What did you get, how did you get the energy of thousands of people? How did you recreate that? Well, a lot of work. We spent five <laughs> weeks in the lead up to the film just concentrating in a dark rehearsal room in the middle of London, just concentrating on that 20 minute concert and wow. just looking at every single detail with Polly Bennett, the great movement uh, coach Genius. that we had. Um, <laughs> looking at, you know, you know what angle your shoulder would be at, what angle your knee would be at, all these kind of things. And it was great, it's a, you know, it's intimidating because it's such an iconic concert, but actually it was very useful at the beginning of the film to have something so specific to turn to that you could just get overwhelmed by the, the prospect of playing these parts, but actually to be able to say, okay, what was Brian doing at that specific moment mm. uh, or you know, for all of our characters? And Polly was in front of you, right? Yeah, pa 
<laughs> oh, Polly was with me though, uh, uh, every step of the way. <laughs> every step of the way. I mean, we got so close. We would do, we would be rehearsing uh, for hours on end. At one point, I was shooting Mr. Robot in New York, and I asked Fox to f fly her out. So we would be working on the weekends in New York after Robot. I was dead to the world, <laughs> but she got us there. She got us there, and walking out when that curtain opened uh, and you see it in the movie it's, uh, it's one of my yeah. favorite moments yeah. uh, of the film yeah the backstage coming out that was one uh, great tracking shot there's and you got to thank you got to thank Tom Siegel our cinematographer just doesn't get enough love this guy what when you watch the film the texture the color how it evolves you know a little handheld at the beginning and then a more polished kind of uh, fi fixed camera towards the end it's it's really really special uh, for, for a form form of cinema on every every step of the way from makeup costumes this thing has it's got something for everybody yeah, it's brilliant they're wrapping me guys thank you so much thank thank you. You. one of the things I love about you is I've always loved you as a leading actor but I always love the some of the roles you play like in Glorious Bastards and obviously here can you talk about kind of becoming fully in that character almost to the point where people don't even recognize you at all um, that's kind of everything I do I, I like to I like to make characters I like to do characters when they called me and said, do you want to be in a movie about Freddie Mercury and Queen? I said, yes. Should I read the script? And they said, oh, of course we're going to send you the script. But I said, yes, already. And I thought the script was fantastic. And that I got to play the part of the EMI executive that tells them they can't do Bohemian Rhapsody is a delicious irony. So it's a really great movie. Now, you've played so many amazing roles throughout your career. And I've always wanted to know, do any of them ever stay with you? Like, do you ever, like, do you ever miss a character you play? I do. I do. I, Tommy Maitland, mo most recently. I'm, I'm, I'm not terribly um, extroverted. I'm a site-specific extrovert. Um, and I have to be slightly extroverted for my job, you know. But when I got to play Tommy Maitland, I found myself being like, how are you? You know, how's your mom? How are things? Just, it's it's really opened me up. Uh, it's a it's a great job, I have to say. You know, it's a I never thought I'd actually get to do it for a living, but it's a lot of fun, and this is really exciting. It's just. This movie is so good. It's I'm, amazing. And my last question for you, considering the Wayne's World connection to Queen, what would Wayne think about this premiere and this film? He would say it's excellent. <laughs> Is that, that's, that's, did that work? That's awesome. Okay. Right. That's well, awesome. party on. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. It's an absolute honor. Thank you for all that you Thanks. give, all the laughs you give me in my career. Oh, uh, thank you. You're, as you sit here right now, you play this character. It's a very emotional experience. Is he still with you at all emotionally? Do you still um, feel him as we're here tonight? I think, uh, I think his presence is always felt by all of us. So I will include myself in saying that, yes, tonight uh, he's with all of us. I think he's shining down on us, and uh, uh, I hope we do him justice. Uh, there's a collection of 6,500 people here at Wembley uh, with, with Roger Taylor and Brian May, this incredible cast. It, it's a very special moment, and uh, I hope he's just winking. <laughs>